320 Computing 2 and this is the second unit in the series of video tutorials on functions. And as with other video tutorials, if you are registered on the module as a lead student, then you'll be able to download a PDF and also a Jupyter Notebook um, of this tutorial from Minerva. So this um, video is going to concentrate on looking at um, functions and parameters and also a little bit more on return values. So in the first unit we revised what a function is, um, how one defines and calls a function, um, passing data back from a function with return, um, and also the uh, introduced the concept of the function signature, the def line. So uh, to start with we're going to talk um, about passing parameters into functions and to go and do this we're going to work with a function which calculates a Fibonacci sequence. So we're going to write a simple function that will go and calculate the Fibonacci sequence up to some maximum value. So as a reminder, the Fibonacci sequence simply adds the previous two terms in the sequence and starts off with 1, 1 as the, as the first terms. Or maybe you want to start with 0, 1 and then the second and third terms are 1, 1. So to write a function which can calculate the Fibonacci sequence, we might do something like this. So we have a function, uh, called it imaginatively enough Fibonacci. Um, it takes a single parameter, which is going to be the maximum value that we're going to go up to. Um, and then what we're going to do is we'll start off by um, defining a list, which is going to hold the sequence. And we initialize it with the first two terms, which is just 1, 1. Um, and we are also going to um, uh, keep hold of um, uh, a calculation of the next term that we're adding to the sequence. So then we have a while loop which simply says whilst the next term is less than the maximum value keep on doing the calculation. And inside that while loop we're going to append that new term to the sequence and then we're going to calculate the next term in the sequence. Um, and in order to go and calculate the next term in the sequence we're simply going to take the sum of the elements in that sequence starting from the second last one going up to the end one. Um, so if that uh, notation for indexing the list looks unfamiliar, then I suggest you have a look over the uh, syntax video tutorials. Um, and when the while loop finishes, we're going to return the complete sequence. And we can show that works by simply calling the function with max terms as 100 and printing the result of that. And you'll see it does indeed produce a Fibonacci sequence where we go up to, but not past, um, 100 as the as the last term there. So we go up to 89. Okay, this all works just fine um, and it's great for calculating Fibonacci sequences. But suppose instead you needed to generate a related sequence where instead of being the sum of two terms, it's the sum of the preceding three terms. So you could sort of use your Fibonacci function that you've already written as a pattern and just modify it slightly to create a new function. So here we have one, I've called it Fibonacci 3, and we start off very much the same. We create a list which we're going to use as our, told our sequence in, only this time we're initialising it with three ones in a row. Uh, and then we calculate the first term we're going to add to that, which would be 3, because it would be the sum of the last three terms, all of which are 1. And then we have the same sort of while loop, except this time when we calculate the new term in the inside the while loop, is the sum of the last three elements of the sequence. Um, and we can see around as we get to the maximum value and then we're going to return the, the sequence. And so we can call that uh, again up to a maximum term of 100 and print the result and you see you get a sequence which is indeed the sum of the last three terms in the sequence. And because you're adding three terms at a time obviously it reaches the point at which the next term will be more than 100 that much more quickly. OK, so that's all fine. That works. That's great. But if you wanted to have one which then did it for, say, four terms or five terms, you'd end up having to create multiple functions, all of which are nearly but not quite doing the same thing. Um, so it would be better if we could gener generalise it and make some sort of generic function which will calculate any Fibonacci-like sequence up to a specified number of terms. So, of course, we can indeed do that. Um, we have to slightly change our, our function, but it's, it's relatively the same. So you'll see that now the 
biggest difference is that we have two parameters in the def line. So our function now takes two parameters. It takes the max value um, and it also takes a new parameter which I called n terms, which is the number of terms you should use to calculate the, the sequence. That means also we have to change how the code works a little bit. So instead of initializing our sequence with a fixed list, I'm now initializing it with a list which is one times the number of terms. And again, if you've watched the syntax tutorials, you'll know that if you multiply a list by an integer, you get that list repeated that number of times. So this simply creates a list of ones, which is the number of terms long, which is what we need to go and start with. Um, and then likewise, we can still just calculate the uh, next term or the first term in the sequence is just going to be the number of terms because it's going to be the one where we just add up all of those ones that we've just got. So we have the same while loop. Um, we're still um, appending the new term and then we calculate the new term as the sum of the sequence of the last n terms values in our list, in our sequence list. Um, so we do that with the syntax minus n terms and then colon. And that loop runs, and then once we get to the point where the sequence has reached, the, the next term has reached the maximum value, it falls out of the while loop, and we can return that sequence. So now we can go and test that code by calling it with um, a max number, in this case of 100, and then 2 for the number of terms, and then again doing the same, but for 3 for the number of terms. And you can see that what it produces as a result is in the first line, the standard Fibonacci sequence, and in the second line, it's doing the same as our Fibonacci 3 function just did um, on the uh, just um, above. So we get just um, a much shorter sequence, but it is the sum of the last three terms. So um, the thing to note here is that the arguments when you're calling the function are being passed in in the same order that they're defined as the parameters in the def line. So um, if you get the, the wrong way around, if you call the function with the arguments the wrong way around, then um, bad things will end up happening, or at least not what you want happening. So here, if we try calling it um, with 4 and 100, well, presumably what we were trying to go and do was, say, calculate a sequence which going up to 100 with four terms involved in it. But what we've actually done is calculate a sequence that goes up to 4 with 100 terms in it. Well, the first thing our function goes and does is it produces a list of 100 ones, and the sum of that is more than 4, so that's what it returns.